Do you dream of success in business, a global lifestyle, or securing a bright future for your family? Dominica's Citizenship by Investment is the path to fulfill your dreams. Access increased global mobility with visa-free travel. Explore new business opportunities. Offer your family a secure and comfortable future. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Adeta Kela Lugorati, and I welcome you all to this webinar brought to you by The Guardian and CS Global Partners. And of course, this is aimed at opening us all up to great opportunities. In light of the uncertain political climate, unstable economies, and more restrictive immigration policies, holding a second citizenship has become a sought after com commodity by wealthy individuals worldwide. Increasingly, more African businessmen not only diversify their investment portfolio, they are now also diversifying their lives to avoid dependence on just one country. Interestingly, no matter what social class you belong to, holding a second citizenship is almost like the new gold. A second citizenship provides stability, security, more freedom of opportunities and global mobility. And dual citizenship from a small peaceful nation provides an extra peace of mind during times of instability. So you'd agree with me that this is such a great timing for this webinar as our conversation today is Dominica citizenship by investment, redefining wealth, safety, and travel for Nigerians. So I'm just gonna give us um, a background of, of Dominica. Dominica is a beautiful island nation that lies between the French islands of Guadeloupe and Martinique. Based on the latest United Nations estimates, the current population of Dominica is 72,078, with, with annual tourist arrivals estimated at approximately 200,000 of whom about 75,000 as silver visitors. So he established its CBI program in 1993, boost its investments. So today the conversation is going to, you know, open our mind up to see the, 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 the great opportunity that is in Dominica. And like I earlier said, the discussion today is hinged on um, Dominica citizenship by investment. Granted, there are other citizenship programs. And of course, I'm sure many people might be wondering, why citizenship by investment? Well, I wish I could break it all up to you, but then we have personalities who are going to do justice to that. And I implore you all to listen as much as possible because today I'm, I'm very sure that just after this webinar, you, you probably have a change of mind about expanding your horizon. And I bet you Dominica is one place filled with opportunities that you should take absolute advantage of. Okay, so today I'm honored to have some important personalities um, with us who would help garner this conversation. I'm pleased to have Dominica's Prime Minister as a facilitator, Dr. the Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt. He has been the Prime Minister of Dominica since 2004, and he's committed to leading the nation in a sustainable manner with the future in mind. So today he's gonna to join us to um, discuss why Dominica is an outstanding destination for Nigerians looking for personal growth, safety, and greater travel opportunities. Greetings to all of you, and of course, greetings to my brothers and sisters uh, in Nigeria. Uh, Dominica and Nigeria uh, have had a very strong bilateral relations um, spanning many decades at least since our independence in 1978. And we have had cooperation agreements between these two countries. As a matter of fact, uh, we do have a, a medical school in Dominica that is um, owned by a Nigerian national. And we have many Nigerian doctors and nurses who are currently in the employ and at the service of the people of Dominica. And of course, we are, we are, we are both Commonwealth countries. Um, we, we do speak English. Um, and Nigeria is a, is a dear uh, and trusted friend of the Commonwealth of Dominica. And, and so it's my pleasure to engage uh, in this uh, exchange and to share with my brothers and sisters in, in Nigeria 
about the Dominica Citizenship by Investment Program and its attendant benefits to, to those who wish uh, to earn themselves a second citizenship. Um, so another person we're going to have join us in the conversation today is Ambassador Imano Nantan. He's the head of the Dominica Citizenship by Investment Unit and an expert at processing citizenship applications. Today, he is going to be talking to us about Dominica's fast processing and carefully selected real estate projects, two of the key reasons why more and more Nigerian investors are choosing Minica as their preferred destination for citizenship by investment. Well, uh, it is in fact my pleasure of being here with you today. I must say over the past few months, uh, or past year or there about, we have seen a lot more interest in the, the Nigerian market. We have seen a number of Nigerians uh, applying for citizenship. As a matter of fact, I think uh, one of the persons who applied from Nigeria is actually right here in Dominica right now, uh, spending his time through, through, through COVID and working from uh, his hotel here in Dominica. So more and more Nigerians are seeing the benefit of applying for our program. More and more Nigerians are seeing the benefit of uh, being citizens of Dominica. We are, we are impressed with, with uh, the collaboration. We are impressed with the interest. Uh, we are very confident that we're going to make a, a very strong team together, Nigeria and Dominica, with our citizenship program. Uh, we offer a safe place uh, to work from. Uh, we have very few, very few COVID cases in Dominica. We haven't had uh, any deaths uh, so far. Our, our, for over 100 days, we're actually COVID-free uh, after a while. We know our borders are open and we only have uh, single digits uh, in terms of active cases in Dominica. And those are all in, in quarantine. So uh, Nigerians are seeing the benefit. And some of them actually have moved to Dominica and are working from here. I know of and I've met uh, people are interested in doing that or who have done that. Uh, I, I must say that my agents are, are, are speaking very excitedly about Nigeria and the market prospects in Nigeria. And uh, from my desk where I sit, looking at the applications, I'm very impressed with the numbers coming from Nigeria. And we're looking forward to uh, a successful, uh, a fruitful, uh, happy new year. And uh, we're looking forward to working together for Nigerian brothers and sisters, as well as all, other Africans uh, and Africans in the diaspora. And of course, um, it would be such a great um, pleasure to have join us the CEO of CS Global Partners, Micah Emmett. Um, so I'm just gonna give you a, a big background about CS Global Partners. It's one of the world's first government legal advisory firms to promote and market citizenship by investment. Um, CBI programs. So they focus on the positive impacts that CBI has on nations that offer CBI programs. The company was established in London in 2012 by Michael Rose Emmett, South African dual qualified lawyer with unrivaled acumen experience in the investment immigration industry. Headquartered in the heart of London, with offices across the Middle East, Africa, and Asia. TS Global Partners comprises of a passionate team of um, reputable specialists and lawyers. Their legal specialists provide expert advice to investors looking to apply for second citizenship or residency. And their marketing. Good afternoon to you, um, Aritoke, and to all your listeners today. We are delighted to be part of um, the Guardian webinar and to speak with um, all the people who have a keen interest in understanding more about dual citizenship, and of course, most importantly, more about Dominica as a country and an option for second citizenship. Okay. So you see, we have three wonderful people join us in the conversation today. So first, um, let's hear from the Prime Minister. Dominica's Citizenship by Investment Program has been channeling foreign investment into Dominica since 1993. How have investment under the program helped to mold the Commonwealth of Dominica into the country that it is today? Well, the Citizenship by Investment Program, as you, as you indicated, was established in 1993 uh, to create an additional source of direct foreign investments to our country and also a, a source of non-tax revenue uh, for the operations of, of government and the state. And we have seen this program evolve to being the most respected uh, citizenship by investment program in the world. And of course, we have been identified by many uh, independent arbiters 
and observers uh, in terms of the conduct of our students by investment program and the ranking of our students by investment program. This, this program certainly has been a, a lifeline for, for us, um, especially in, in situations where we have external shocks, as we are now experiencing with COVID-19, the entire year 2020, uh, we've grappled with um, COVID-19 like many other countries. And every country in this world, with no exception, has seen a dramatic um, decrease in revenues and an increase in expenditure, especially with regards to um, sustaining livelihoods, um, ensuring that everyone who was at work at the at the start of COVID remained employed to be able to feed their families and to pay their mortgages and the rent. And also with the management of COVID itself, it's, it's, a, it's a significant cost to manage COVID-19 with, with testing, with, with lab equipment, um, uh, et cetera, and additional nurses, and additional doctors, additional human resources uh, to fight COVID-19. And we also have to provide for the, those in the vulnerable groups and to ensure that they have the means of survival in this very difficult time. And uh, in 2017, we were impacted by this monstrous uh, hurricane, Hurricane Maria, and which destroyed 226% of our GDP, of, of our economy. And the Citizens by Investment Program proved itself to be a reliable uh, source of revenues in those difficult times, in normal times, but more so in difficult times. And we've also used this, um, the, the proceeds from the Citizens by Investment Program uh, to invest in manufacturing, to invest in tourism, to invest in agriculture and the introduction of, of modern technologies uh, in agriculture, um, in education, uh, in health, in infrastructure, what is the construction of roads or bridges or schools or hospitals or health centers or housing, uh, this is my investment program has been impactful. And so even in this difficult period where we have seen a dramatic decrease in our revenues, we have been able to use the proceeds from the Citizens by Investment Program in the areas which I identified, but also to reduce on our external debt. Um, you know, because in this time, borrowing increases for every country. And so we have been able to mitigate against that um, by using, in large measure, the, the proceeds from the Citizens by Investment Program. So it, it has proven to be a, a, a very reliable uh, source of, of, of revenues, non-tax revenue, and also, um, in the area of capital investment. And what the, the important aspect of the season to buy investment program is that it is very robust and resilient. Uh, a natural disaster won't stop um, applications from coming in. As a matter of fact, uh, our country was destroyed with 90% of our buildings um, destroyed by Hurricane Maria in 2017. And literally, literally 48 hours later, we, we, we were back in business. Um, receiving applications and processing applications. And even in this period of, um, of lockdown in so many countries, uh, we have not seen a, a decline in applications. As a matter of fact, we have seen an increase in applications uh, because they, they, they need to move and they need to create a better um, place of safety for so many families and business people um, has been dramatically increased as a result of, of COVID-19. And, and so it is a very resilient um, source of, um, of, of non-tax revenue. And it is a, a program which is highly um, regarded, um, highly promoted by this government, myself personally as prime minister of our country. Well done, well done. So th this brings me to my next question. Dominica has come a long way since the windfall of Hurricane Maria in 2017. How do you balance your commitment to Dominica's growth with your aspiration of becoming the world's first climate resilient nation? Well, there's a congruence between the both. Um, you know, we are committed to protecting the environment. And Dominica has had a long history of this. As a matter of fact, um, for many decades now, 45% of our land space uh, is protected by law as national forest reserves. And a significant uh, 
proportion of our seascape is also protected as marine reserve. So we've had a long tradition of protecting the environment. Clearly there is the advent of climate change and the behavior of many developed countries and the emission of carbon gases into atmosphere causing more hurricanes and more frequent and ferocious hurricanes and storms affecting Dominica and several Caribbean countries. So this is a reality that we have to confront. Uh, we have been advocating for um, action on climate change. Uh, it has not been forthcoming from the developed world. And therefore the question is, what do we do as countries? One, who countries which do not contribute much to carbon gases and countries which are highly impacted by climate change. What do we do if those who are causing it are not listening? And so we've decided to focus on building a resilient nation. And what do we mean by building a resilient nation? It means by looking at our environmental practices. So Dominica is among the first countries to, to ban the use of, of, of single um, use plastic bags, styrofoam material, uh, what is tariff from cups or plates or forks, uh, we have banned those things uh, from in being imported or used in our country. And we are building resilient homes uh, so that when the storms come, our citizens will be in a better position to withstand it. We've also reviewed our and up, up, upgraded our energy policy, whereby we are targeting for our energy to come from 90%, 90% of our energy to come from renewable sources, uh, hydro, uh, solar, and very importantly, geothermal. And we expect our geothermal plant to come into effect by the first quarter of 2022. And so by 2022, we will be able to supply 90% uh, of our energy from renewable energy uh, sources, moving away from fossil fuel. But we're also looking at financial resilience and putting in place um, legislation and fiscal policies, uh, debt sustainable um, uh, policies to ensure that in the event of external shocks or natural disasters, our country um, is in a better position to withstand it. And also educating our citizens getting all citizens involved and part of the process of building that resilient nation. So in, in terms of our aspiration to be the first climate resilient nation in the world and sustainable development, they really come hand in hand. Um, and this is why in respect to the uh, hotels that have been built under, this, under the Citizenship by Investment Program, these proposals, these projects must conform to our ecotourism principles and practices. We will not allow any hotel or any investments to be made in Dominica that is not going to enhance up and protect the environment. Um, and so if you're coming to invest in Dominica, you must be mindful of the fact that the environment is sine qua non. You have at all costs to protect the environment because that is really all we have as a world. Um, to ensure the sustainability um, of our people, our livelihoods, our jobs, and our own very survival. So there is a, a, a hand in hand, it's really a hand in glove arrangement with regards to our efforts to build in a resilient nation and sustainable development. And our hope and prayer is that the rest of the world uh, will understand the need for us to take care of the environment. And so we've been using a significant portion of our CBI proceeds to help us build that resilient nation. And so we are funding our, our major housing initiative uh, with proceeds from the, C from the CBI. We have, we, have, we, have building, we have built and building several internationally branded hotels in Dominica, whether it's a Marriott, whether it's a Hilton, whether it's a, a Kempinski, uh, we have, we're building in Dominica. Uh, some have opened and we expect some to, to be open uh, by the end of 2021 and others in early 2022. Um, so we invest in heavily in the protection of the environment using the, the, the CBI funds. And, and, uh, and, and so our commitment to the environment is, is uncompromising. Oh, I can tell. When I was reading through your profile, I saw that um, you were committed to um, leading the nation in a sustainable 
way and of course with the future in mind i mean everything you've said now just attests to that and i can honestly see that this is well thought so well done well done sam so um i i'd also um like to ask both dominica and nigeria are very ambitious nations how can citizenship of dominica help astute nigerian um, entrepreneurs to pursue their business goals and manage their wealth well there are a number of benefits to Dominican citizenship. Uh, first of all, as I said in my opening remarks, Dominican and Nigeria have enjoyed uh, excellent relations over several decades. Uh, we have had cooperation agreements with Nigeria. They are Dominican citizens of uh, Nigerian citizens resident in Dominica. We have uh, about 230 Nigerian students, medical students uh, resident in Dominica. Uh, there's a medical school that is owned by a Nigerian um, citizen. And, and so there is this, this link between, or this traditional historical link uh, between our two countries. In respect to um, the Citizenship Investment Program, Dominica now boasts of having visa-free or visa on arrival for 143 or so countries. And by the end of 2021, we will certainly increase this by another 25 or so percent. We are engaging in a very aggressive campaign uh, to expand our visa-free access to, to many countries in the world. And so we're in the process now of negotiating those agreements with several countries. Um, Nigerians will be able to travel to many of the business hubs um, across, across the world. Uh, we have concluded, for example, uh, negotiations for visa-free access to the People's Republic of China a country which we've had um, excellent relations with. Um, the, the coming to effect was delayed by um, the COVID-19 and we expect for it to be concluded and, and put in effect uh, in this year, uh, which is a major plus. Um, as you know, China does not really allow visa-free into its country um, for many passport holders. And they have given that privilege uh, to the Dominican passport um, of all categories. So it's a major plus. Uh, we have also, as a result, expanded our diplomatic presence in many countries, in, in the Middle East, for example, um, early uh, in 2020, we inaugurated our uh, embassy in Abu Dhabi uh, because of the growing number of, of citizens who are resident in the great nation of the United Arab Emirates. And the intention is to continue to expand our um, diplomatic presence uh, in Africa, in, in the Middle East and, and other parts of Europe. And, then, and also in Asia. So, and of course, the, the, the mobility of the, of, the, of the citizens. So I, I know, for example, you know, Nigeria's passport has a particular challenge in, in terms of um, uh, visa-free access and, and, and even the acquisition of visas. And, and so it will, be, it will be certainly a golden opportunity for our Nigerian brothers and sisters uh, to um, apply for and become Dominican citizens that would certainly make life um, dramatically um, different for them um, having this Dominican passport. Their, their children can access universities in, in you know, virtually anywhere in the world. Um, the issue of uh, mobility, the issue of ensuring that your uh, business opportunities are expanded. We in Dominica, for example, we have a economic partnership agreement with the European Union, the entire European Union. And we just concluded a similar agreement with the United Kingdom, now that the United Kingdom is no longer part of Europe, um, where our goods and services can be exported to the European Union and the United Kingdom uh, duty free. Uh, so so they, they, they're huge attendant benefits uh, for a Nigerian uh, citizen uh, to also be a citizen of, of, of Dominica. And, and, we, and we, do urge, we do urge many of you uh, to proceed with haste uh, to apply. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure that people are already considering taking advantage of this opportunity. <laughs> okay, so um, citizens of Dominica certainly have an excellent quality of life, thanks in large part to the Dominica Citizenship by Investment Program. One of the major driving forces behind the uptake of citizenship by investment in Nigeria is the opportunity to increase one's global mobility. How does Dominica's visa-free and visa-on-arrival offering 
compared to that of Nigeria? I, I, I believe uh, based on the statistics we have, um, we are ahead by you by about 200%. <laughs> um, so we, in terms of the number of countries that uh, a Nigerian citizen can enter with a Nigerian passport as compared to Dominica, um, is, is about 200% difference, uh, you know, and, and even countries where you need to apply for visas, we have almost 100% success rate. Uh, we have students going to the United States, for example, who require student visas. And in 2020, for example, not one student out of several hundred students who were sent to the United States would deny the visa. Um, so the, the, the track record there is, is excellent. Um, if you're going to Canada and you need a student visa or, or visitor's visa, Dominicans are not denied. Uh, you know, whether you are Dominic, a citizen by birth or a citizen uh, by marriage or a citizen through the economic citizenship program, you, you are not denied by this because of the, of the security arrangements we have associated with our citizenship by investment program. This program um, continues to be scrutinized by many countries, many institutions, many organizations. And even if they may have concerns about citizenship by investment programs globally, when you look at, at our due diligence processes, um, we are really, and I'm saying so with the greatest of humility, we are really second to none in that regard. The various tiers that of, of security that we, uh, of due diligence that we follow, we are second to none. And by March of 2021, we'll be moving away from the machine readable passports to the um, biometric passports. Uh, so again, further increasing our our um our security of our, of our passport our security of our, of our citizenship program and enhancing these aspects these characteristics of our program and and just to mention to you in respect to um dominica and become a dominican citizen uh we do not have capital capital gains tax gains tax we do not have uh, estate tax we do not have death tax uh, we do not have property taxes. You are able to repatriate your profits and dividends from Dominica to anywhere in the world with no restrictions. Um, the constitution of a country is supreme. Therefore, um, one, one rights to its property is protected by the constitution. The state cannot expropriate your property without fair market compensation. And if it does, it has to be, you, could, you could go to the courts to um, get, in, get a, the matter heard to ensure that your rights are not trampled upon by any government in office. Um, it, it is a very secure country. It is a mature democracy, notwithstanding the fact that we are young as an independent nation. Uh, you know, there's, a, there's always peaceful transition of power in our country. Uh, every citizen who is 18 years or older has a right to vote. Um, and where in the world you could see a prime minister from time to time driving himself? With, with no security detail, uh, walking the streets among the people. Um, it speaks to the, uh, the, the security, security of our country and uh, the ability for any citizen, whether you're the prime minister or, um, or anybody else, you could walk the streets without fear of your own personal safety and freedom. It must, it must really be a safe place to be. I mean, for a prime minister to you know, walk on the street, drive around the streets without aid, security aids by by side. That's that's a good one. That's a good one. So I'm sure people are taking note already, and they are env they are envisioning how safe and beautiful Dominica is. Okay, so this this leads me to my next question. Dominica has made significant progress in recent years with respect to its visa free and visa on arrival offering. Does your government have any plans whatsoever to strengthen this offering further? Oh yes, oh yes, we do. As a matter of fact, I, I am meeting with all our ambassadors and and um, honorary consuls and consulates um, uh, this month to to get them a further charge for us to continue our negotiations with many countries in the world um, that are still outstanding in respect to visa-free access to Dominica. Um, so every 
ambassador and, and, and every consulate has been mandated by myself as prime minister uh, to give this top priority. And there is a, a, a strategic plan for this that has been shared with all of our, our various ministries and government departments. And it is something that we see as, as a priority number one for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in my country. And um, we have, we have um, appropriated the resources for this. Uh, and we are confident uh, that we will see a further increase in the number of countries um, which we um, which will have visa-free access to. And, and these are friendly nations um, that have signaled their intention to, to support our request. And, and, and no doubt, um, we're looking for this. Our aim really is to is to see whether we can have 100% visa-free access in in, in, you know, in, in the world. Um, but I'm, I'm confident that in, in this year, we will certainly inch closer uh, to this realization. Well, that's incredible. That's great to hear. That's great to hear. More, more, um, um, I just get, keep getting impressed by every, everything being said here. And I'm sure that our listeners are taking note as well. So to our Nigerian listeners for whom having a respected citizenship is important, how would you describe Dominica's reputation in the international sphere? And what role, if any at all, does the Dominica Citizenship by Investment Program play in protecting Dominica's reputation? Well, well Dominica carries out its um, foreign policy based on, on, um, on mutual respect, uh, non-interference in any country's internal affairs. Uh, we are friends of all and satellites of none. Um, we have good relations with, with, with every country in the world. We are not at war with any country. Um, and we respect the norms and traditions and the, the laws of, of countries and the, the right to self-determination. Uh, you know, and we contribute to um, the global peace architecture by being responsible citizens and, and being a responsible country. We have been at the forefront of, of the fight against climate change. Um, we have been at the at the forefront for, for, for religious freedoms and, 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 and the rights of, of women to, to their own survival. Um, and in respect to the citizenship by investment program, the key there for us is about the integrity of the program. The funds that we generate from, from the citizenship by investment program are important, but we're not prepared to compromise our integrity and to compromise our contribution to international peace and security because of money. Um, and, and this is why we pride ourselves on ensuring that our due diligence and security checks are uncompromising. And we have several layers of this process. And, and we do not, we, ha we have no intention to um, affecting this by compromising our security arrangements where the citizens by investment program is concerned. And so we only accept applications from reputable um, um, citizens, from reputable people. And so somebody who knows that, if somebody knows that he's trying to get Dominican citizenship to um, elude um, his own uh, security or, or government, some systems or whatever it is, or to um, promote tax evasion or, or, or the like, Dominica is not the country to apply to. Um, we will only accept applications from respectful, respectable um, individuals who are seeking to create a better way of life for themselves, for their families, who are seeking to, to, to move more freely, uh, whether it's for education, whether it's for healthcare, whether it's for business, whether it's for um, seeking um, jobs and better opportunities in, in, in various regions whether it is fleeing um, persecution or, or persecution because of, of race, because of religion, uh, because of ethnicity, um, we, we, we are here to help. And as a small nation, we see, uh, we see this as our contribution to the world. The reality is there are many people who have found themselves in circumstances which were not brought upon by themselves. There, it, it is unfortunate that we speak in the, in the third decade of 21st century of um, people being born stateless, um, you know, not having a, an identity, not having a country to say, this is the country I'm from. 
notwithstanding the fact that you were born in, in a country. And, and so how do we assist these people? And this is why I've always maintained that I believe that the United, United Nations should really look into the citizenship investment program um, from that perspective of ensuring that every, every person who is born into this world um, is given a better opportunity of survival. And, 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 and enhancing, using the CBI program to enhance people's security, to enhance people's mobility, um, to, to allow the, the, the children to know that they can have the same benefits and opportunities um, if given an opportunity. There are many people in the world who are born in circumstances who will never have the opportunity uh, to, to, to achieve their God-given talents and, and, and skills because of the of a circumstance which has been forced upon them and so as a small country while we appreciate the foreign direct investments while we appreciate the funds we see it from an ideological philosophical standpoint as making a contribution uh to the world and 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 bringing uh, comfort and peace of mind uh to so many individuals and families across the world and i have had the occasion myself personally to interact with many of, um, of our now citizens um, and to hear the stories um, of their circumstance before becoming a Dominican citizen and to appreciate the difference um, after having received a Dominican citizenship is amazing um, and, and it's very touching. So for me personally, I, I support the CBI program not because um, only of the economic benefits and the financial benefits of it, but we see as a small country, we may not have uh, financial wealth to, to give to the nations as developmental assistance, but we're giving them um, something that is even more valuable, um, citizenship, you know, um, and to ensure even the succeeding generations, um, their future can be assured that they have a country if they wish to come to at any time to reside, um, that no one can prevent them from coming in. So while we do not um, require residency before application or after becoming a citizen, you are free to come to Dominica at any time and, and no one can stop you at, at any borders of our country. So, so um, for me, it is, it, is, it is a wonderful contribution that my small country is making on, on a global scale. Thank you so much. Well done. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, you know, um, I'm sure a lot of people are already um, tuning their minds to wanting to know what step exactly to take to, you know, going through this path of citizenship by investment. And I must tell you that I am one of such people. I am so considering this as well. Thank you. Well, you have CS right. Global here with you, CS Global Partners, and I'm sure they can facilitate your application immediately after yeah. uh, this, this interview. Uh, but I really want to okay. extend um, best wishes to you and, and your family, and of course, to all my Nigerian okay. brothers and sisters, to the government of Nigeria. Um, we are going through this very difficult and, and painful period in our existence as, as a global community with COVID-19. And of course, with um, more lockdowns taking place in many parts of the world with a new strain of the virus um, emerging, um, one really does not know what the future holds. But I believe okay. through multilateralism, working together as nations, uh, we can overcome this challenge. Um, working alone is not going to help any one of us. And we, we need to work together, uh, share our expertise, share our resources, uh, let the vaccines become a public good and another means of, of, of earning wealth to ensuring that, that every citizen mm -hmm. who needs a vaccine um, can have access to it, that if the price is not prohibited, um, because it should not it should not be for those who only who could afford, but for for everyone. And and we're hoping that um, this understanding of everyone. making the vaccine a public good is is is, ex is excellent. And this is why I commend the government of the People's Republic of China um, for declaring um, that they are making this vaccine a public good and and extending that offering to so many countries in the world. So thank you very much, and, and may God bless your efforts. Oh, thank you too. Thank you very much, Amen. Thank you. Thank you too. Thank you.
So great. Um, the next person we're going to have um, talk to us is Ambassador Iman Nantan. He's the head of the Citizenship and Investment Unit. Um, he's the head of the, okay, just like as, as I mentioned, and he's an expert at processing citizenship application. So today we're going to listen to him discuss Dominica's fast processing and carefully selected real estate projects. Two of the key reasons why more and more Nigerian investors are choosing Dominica as their preferred destination for citizenship by investment. Thank you so much, um, Ambassador Nathan, for being a part of this. So um, let's let's just hear you give your uh, welcome welcome address. Thank you very much uh, for having me. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to all the others on the panelists. It's my pleasure being with you. Thank you. Oh, great, Ambassador Nathan. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to ask, have you, have you observed an increase in applications from Nigerian citizens in recent times? If so, to what do you attribute this increase? Yes, we have definitely seen uh, increasing numbers from Nigeria and uh, other parts of Africa as well, but particularly in Nigeria. I believe that those have been uh, because more and more Nigerians uh, or Nigerian business people want to travel and want to do business and they're 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 not no know of dominica they know of our program they have seen the reports coming from the financial times uh where dominica program has been ranked the best program in the world for four consecutive years and that has been done because of of how quickly we process because uh, of how solid our program is the experience uh in our program we have been existing for for um almost 30 years with our program here uh, in dominica and uh they have seen their colleagues their brothers, their sisters, other businessmen uh, and women in Nigeria, becoming citizens of Dominica and moving on, having easy access uh, to all of Europe, uh, access to places like Brazil, access to to uh, Russia, very soon access to to uh, the Chinese market. So really and truly, I believe the good news story that is uh, Dominican citizens and and the ease of travel around the world globally to uh, business capitals is spreading through through Nigeria. And uh, we are very impressed with, with the numbers we have seen out of Nigeria and the rest of Africa. And we are sure that that is uh, going to grow and grow uh, very, very well over the next uh, few months. Oh, great. That's quite optimistic. And that's, that's incredible. So the Dominican Citizenship by Investment Program has evolved into one of the most successful sought after programs of its kind. One of the ways in which the program has evolved is in the introduction of two distinct investment options. Can you explain to our listeners what these are? In Dominica, we have introduced the program from uh, March of 1993. Uh, what we did in, in 2014, the government gave a second tier uh, of the program. The first tier of the program was that you could become a citizen by investing in uh, the EDF, the, the direct government fund where the money would go to the government and those money would be utilized for national purposes, for uh, infrastructure, roads, uh, schools, bridges, hospitals, uh, et cetera. And the money is used by the government of Dominica for national uh, purposes. You, the citizen would benefit by becoming a citizen, get a passport and be able to move uh, forward around the world easily. In 2014, the government had an amendment to the program and allow investors to invest in private real estate, private pre-approved government projects. For instance, the Prime Minister mentioned we're doing uh, seven five-star hotels. So we are becoming, uh, we are uh, quickly the five-star capital of the world. We are a small country. We mentioned only 72,000 people, uh, but we, 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 we are proud of ourselves being the nature island of the world. And we find that the people who want to come to Dominica are typically high-end, uh, investors who want uh, the ultra luxury mixed with the rich natural beauty of Dominica. We, we, we are uh, ranked by Skin Diver magazine as the top three diving sites in the world, where the country is as beautiful above, uh, above ground as well as beneath the ocean. So uh, we allow investors to invest in real estate that are pre-approved by the government. And when you do, you become a citizen of Dominica. The Prime Minister mentioned a few of them. We have Kempinski, uh, Europe's oldest uh, five-star luxury hotel, uh, opened in Dominica through the program. We are building the Anisha Resort, which is uh, the world's largest hotel chain, Marriott, uh, doing a, a hotel here in Dominica under the program. 
They have also booked them for a second hotel, business hotel, uh, Marriott Courtier, which will be uh, in, in, in the capital Rousseau as well. We have uh, the Hilton Hotel. We're doing uh, Tranquility Beach Hilton Hotel somewhere uh, along uh, on the West Coast, and that will be opening uh, uh, very soon. We have other local hotels like Secret Bay and Jungle Bay, which are well known, uh, won many global awards for the excellence uh, uh, service that they provide to, to uh, high net worth tourists. So investors can invest in those projects. Those investments belong to the investor, but under the program, you must hold your investment for a minimum of three years. If you sell your investment after five years, then the person who buys from you would have themselves qualify to be a citizen of Dominica. So here you are, investing in a product, a product that you know, the world's largest hotel chain Marriott and nature resort, uh, Hilton Kempinski, uh, or, or you could or choose our local Jungle Bay or uh, Secret Bay, Secret Beach, and become uh, investors in Dominica. Those are your funds. You gain, you gain returns on your funds uh, annually from, from, from your investments in those hotel chains. Once you do that, you become a citizen of Dominica. You give yourself the opportunity to travel uh, globally. But not just that, your children would also become citizens. You, you are entitled to, to add dependents in your, in your program. For instance, if you apply, you could include your spouse. You could include your parents or grandparents. You could include your, uh, your spouse, parents, or their grandparents. You could even include your brother or sister once they are under 25, unmarried and without children. You could include your children uh, as well, or your grandchildren. So you have the opportunity to uh, gain global mobility, not just for you, but for your entire family and that of, of, uh, of uh, your spouse. So we are pleased to offer those, those programs and people are investing uh, in them. And I must say the success uh, is, is tremendous. We, we see uh, the program growing from strength to strength. We see more and more people uh, interested. At one point, the interest came mainly from, from China and Southeast Asia. The Middle East uh, found out about our program and they have they invested heavily in our program. I believe uh, Africa is now becoming a, a hotspot for our program. Nigeria, particularly, South Africa is becoming very interested. Uh, even the US market is becoming interested now with, with all the, the, the problems uh, in the US. People want, want the, the thing of certainty and Americans themselves are applying for our program. We have a number mm -hmm. of people from Europe applying as well. Uh, British, French, Germans, they are applying to be citizens of Dominica. So we have a premium uh, product that we offer and uh, the world has taken note and we are growing from strength to strength. Wow, um, um, there is no doubt that this program will keep growing from strength to strength because I mean, people are super conscious and very particular about stability and certainty. And once the make has that offer, then obviously you can count as many people in as possible. So let, let me ask you this. You mentioned that applicants must choose real estate that has been pre-approved by the government. What options are available to applicants and why does Dominica lead number of approved real estate development? Yes, uh, we have at present uh, about eight hotels that are approved. And I mentioned they're all five star. So I mentioned uh, Anichi, Marriott, I mentioned Kempinski, I mentioned the Hilton, uh, I mentioned Jungle Bay, I mentioned Secret Bay. We have uh, Timbo's uh, apartment and we have Bacocolet among the products that, that are available right now. The government particularly limit the, the products and the projects because we want to ensure that the investors choose from high-end, high-quality pro, uh, project, projects that will succeed. At any one time, we limit the number of, of uh, invest, investments that are available because we want to ensure that the sure. investors have a mass transfusion of funds into each, each project and each project will be completed within a reasonable time. There are countries uh, with a program where you have 50, 80, 100, 120 different projects that investors could invest in. But if you have uh, a certain number uh, of investors coming in and they invest in five projects, it's likely that the five projects will themselves succeed much quickly and if they have to choose from uh, 150 pro uh, projects. 
So the funds movement into each project is, is uh, not just an injection, but it's more like a transfusion. So that happens as one project uh, opens up and move on, we, we, we open up another project to replace that first project. So that's where we are. Kempinski has been sold out, they are open, and then we went on, we, we opened up another hotel chain so people, people could invest in. That is important for us. We as government go out to uh, promote the different projects that, that are on, on, on offer for investors to invest in. So we've, we, we, have, we feel that we have a stake in it as well. The government not own shares in any of the hotels, but since we go out to you and we ask you to invest, we have a responsibility as a government to ensure that the project you're investing in is one that is valid, one that is bona fide, one that will succeed. Uh, the funds when you invest does not go in directly to the investor, it goes into an escrow account that is signed both by the government and uh, the, 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 the hotel chain or the investor chain that, you, that you're working with. We have approved quantity mm -hmm. surveyors to look at the project at any one time and the, we, the investor can draw down once the, the evaluator said that this work has been done, uh, we have reached that landmark and that amount of funds should be made available from uh, the escrow account. The government signs, the, the developer signs, and we, and we, we move forward. But we take full responsibility. Uh, we take strong responsibility for working with the investor and securing and ensuring that the funds invested by the investor uh, goes to what it has been invested. In what other ways has the Dominica Citizenship by Investment Program evolved? What are the key reasons that Dominica is consistently named as the best citizenship by investment nation in the world by Financial Times publication, the CBI Index? I believe uh, one of the reasons why we have uh, been ranked uh, among the best products, uh, projects in the world, program in the world, is largely due to the fact that we listen. We listen to our agents, we listen to our investors, and we try to tweak our program for, to improve all the time. So our investors uh, at one point wanted to include more of their family members. So we allowed them to do that. During the COVID situation, we found that the family unit is key and is strong. And we, people wanted to look more uh, within and, uh, and among the family. So we allow people to, to add more members of the family. But our, our project, our program has been existing for a long time. And people have seen uh, that they invested or their friends invested in, in Dominica and were able to pass on in, uh, citizenship to their children, their grandchildren and great grandchildren. We have been there for a while. The program has uh, evolved and has, has full experience. Our due diligence has been very solid. We haven't been exposed to, to uh, any scandal uh, in the last uh, 28 years that we have had our program. So our investors are, are fully confident that this program is one that is valid, that is born of a PD. We uh, continue to ensure that we approve our investors within three months. So our, when, when once I want to apply, we, uh, we assess and we, we uh, allow a staff in our office to work with every investor as a VIP client. That ensures that your, pro, your file is being looked at specifically, uh, done, being done in a quick time, and within three months, you will get approval uh, or will tell you we're not interested uh, in, in your investment. But because our agents know very well our criteria and how, how tight we are, they ensure that they do proper screening of the applicants uh, as well. So most times somebody recommends you, he or she would know that you will be approved because he knows if his clients are not approved, then it's going to mark against, against the agent. We do not accept clients directly among ourselves. You must come through an approved agent. The approved agents are done on an annual basis. We assess how many files you have sent into our unit, how many uh, were approved, how many were denied. If you send us too many bad files, sorry, we will, we will not, we will not uh, approve you or, or continue with your, your license for another year. So our agents are scrutinized at the clients very, very well. Know your client is important in, in uh, these days of financial transactions. So we have strong due diligence. Uh, the, the, the cost of, of our investment is not exorbitant. It's only $100,000 if you di apply directly for an individual directly to the government. Or if you do real estate, 
is two hundred thousand dollars minimum for an investment in in uh, a, pro a project. That investment you could sell to your friends, you could pass on to your children, sell to other members of your family. They, would, they themselves would qualify to be citizens of Dominica. So our program is, is experience one. Our program uh, has a a reasonable threshold too. Our program has strong due diligence uh, free, and our, our, our program happens in a quick time. Four. These are among uh, the main reasons why we are a solid program in Dominica. And then again, we listen to you, we listen to our 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 agents, and we tweak our pro our project, our program uh, to offer the clients what he or she wants, what the market demands, without compromising on the quality of our program at any one time. Oh, it's good to know that the process follows due, de uh, due process. It's also good to know that this is not just up to, oh, I, I like this particular person. I want that person to be a part of Dominica. It's, it's important to understand that this process is secure and that's something one should be grateful for. So the Dominican Citizenship by Investment Program is clearly the product of years of industry experience and know-how. Now let's turn our sides to Dominica as a country. Other than the, other than expansive visa-free and visa on arrival access, why should our Nigerian listeners, why should they choose to invest in citizenship of Dominica? Dominica is a small country. We're a small but beautiful country. We're a country where uh, democracy is alive uh, and well. We're a country, uh, and, uh, in the, uh, irrespective of our size, uh, our prime minister has said to the world that we're going to build the world's first climate resilient uh, nation. We are a country that anyone would really be proud uh, to be part of. We're a country where uh, resilience is key and constant to what we do. Uh, we are a country where the government ensures that if you move to Dominica, if you, you choose to, then uh, healthcare for our citizens, once you're 18 or under, or 60 or older is free of charge. It's provided free of charge. We provide free education to our, our, all our citizens uh, in Dominica from, from um, primary to tertiary. We are a country where we, we respect the rule of law, where uh, we live and respect modern nature, uh, where we believe that the protection of the environment is key and paramount for us as a people. We're a country where the family uh, is key for us, how we treat our elderly depends and speaks on who we are as a people. So for instance, uh, under the, uh, in Dominica, from the uh, funds from citizenship by investment program, the government ha has uh, put in place a, what we call a yes we care program. So uh, Dominicans, like uh, people from anywhere, migrate or travel. You could go to Europe, you could, you could go to North, or North or South America. And sometimes uh, our, our uh, senior citizens are left behind. The government would pay somebody to, to work with every senior citizen who's left behind to ensure that he or she is taken care of on a daily basis. We have a nice uh, warm meal, or warm meals throughout the day, a nice bath, the houses are clean, the clothes are, are, are taken care of, and that's been paid for by the government of Dominica. The government shows that our young people uh, need the support. So under the program, from the funds from the Civil Investment Program, we have what we call an NEP, National Employment Program, where young people live in school, would be given an opportunity to work as interns in any business, private sector or government sector, uh, being paid for by the government, by the government to ensure that our young people get experiences uh, to work before they get a full job uh, somewhere else. We are a government that, uh, because we are in, in a, a zone where hurricanes are, are, are prevalent, we are building 5,000 hurricane resilient homes. Over the past two years, we have given over 1,500 homes of such homes to people of Dominica without charging them a cent for it, because we care about our people, who we are, how we live, how we treat our people, how we deal with the less fortunate among us, the tables who we are as a nation. I am proud of being a Dominican citizen. I am proud of the achievements of, of our government in Dominica. I am proud of our, our achievement as a country and as a people. And I am sure our Nigerian brothers and sisters who would come to Dominica and who would invest uh, in, our, in our program in Dominica would also be very proud, we would uh, be proud of how a small country takes the opportunity to deal with its people and how we can contribute to humanity. As a, as a people, as a nation, I believe we will all be very, very proud of that. 
Oh, we, we most definitely are proud of you already. I mean, when you hear um, great and, and incredible things that you, you all have put in place, I mean, everything, all we all need to know is that a government care about its people. I mean, having done all that, I must say, and I'm sure that our listeners are very proud as well. So um, lastly, before I let you go, let me just ask this. Physical safety, financial security, and increased business opportunities. These are valuable benefits of obtaining citizenship of Dominica. But at what point after completing citizenship by investment process, do successful applicants become citizens of Dominica? And when do successful applicants, when do they get to you know, receive their passport? In the program, if you invest in our program, we do not accept your money upfront. We give you an opportunity for us to look at your file. Once you put on your file, we take uh, around three weeks to do due diligence, and we use the best companies in the world to conduct due diligence for us. The, these are enhanced due diligence, boots on the ground due diligence, where the due diligence firm would go to uh, your country, they would go to where you work, go to where you live, give us pictures of your home, of your office, etc. So we know who we are dealing with. Once that's done and we feel comfortable, we issue a letter of approval in principle. Then you have a month to pay your investments. Once we get the funds, we proceed in, proceed in, in producing your certificate of naturalization, which is what makes you a Dominican citizen. That would typically take uh, about two or three weeks and you're a citizen. Once you have that certificate, you apply to the immigration department uh, for a Dominican passport. And that would take a, a few days to about uh, a week or two and then you're citizen and, and ready to move all, all around the world. In Dominica, the opportunities to invest, I mentioned we are a small country, yes, a very country that is uh, booming. We're not asking you to invest in, in uh, a country that is we're relatively unknown, yes, by many, but in Dominica, for the last three years, our economic growth has been number one in uh, the Western Hemisphere. 8%, 9%, 9.5%. These are the rates that we have been growing at as a small country. So we are not just building a resilient country. We are, build, we are doing that uh, in a way and uh, in a manner where investments continue to move. The country is moving forward. In our program, the government is doing, uh, doing uh, houses, as I mentioned, for those who are less fortunate among us. The, the prime minister has announced that we're going to build an international airport with funds from the program that uh, will start uh, in, in a few months' time. So we are giving you the opportunity to invest in a country that is beautiful, one uh, where we see ourselves as in tune and live in harmony as part of nature, whether in the sea, the rivers, the waterfalls, the mountains, our flora, our fauna are absolutely amazing. I am very, very sure, having moved around Africa myself, I served as ambassador to Libya for a number of years uh, before the fall of the last government. I moved to Morocco and uh, Kenya, Ghana, uh, Senegal. I am very, very sure that our African brothers and sisters would, would uh, feel very proud in being part of this small nation, but this great nation that is making this contribution to humanity. I would want to urge the businessmen and women of Nigeria to consider Dominica, to consider the investments in these high level projects, to consider uh, investments in humanity, consider uh, investments in a country that leaves as its priority the upkeep of nature. I uh, am sure that your listeners will feel proud to work with us in trying to do uh, and achieve the things that we're trying to achieve as a nation, as a people, as human, as human beings ourselves. Thanks so much, Ambassador Nantan. It was such a great and eye-opening conversation we've had so far. Really appreciate you shedding light and I'm sure that you're like this conversation is like recalibrating our minds to wanting to take advantage of this opportunity. That's incredible. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, great. So we have uh, Micah Emmett, the CEO of CS Global Partners, join us. Um, I early established that this webinar is brought to us by Guardian, the Guardian and CS Global Partners. So it's a great privilege and honor to have joined in this conversation, Micah Emmett. Micah, thank you so much for joining us. So great, let's just get right into the question. So why is it that citizenship by investment is often described as a win-win solution? Well, 
let's start off with what, with what citizenship by investment actually entails. So citizenship by investment is um, where a reputable investor will gain citizenship by investment by making a significant contribution to a country that offers a program. And, you know, for a Nigerian family or business person, the idea of grabbing hold of this concept of being a dual citizenship opens up a number of doors to the wider world. Um, and I think it, it's a combination of, you know, greater physical security, um, you know, security and mobility rights. I think on the other hand, an exchange in exchange for the um, attracting citizens into a country, the country benefits from obviously the direct um, investment helps countries then build sustainable economic frameworks and diversify their economy. Um, so I think one of the focuses is in a fast moving world, you know, investors need to be looking at reliable, reputable and quick solutions. And of course, Dominica is this win-win solution for those um, individuals. Um, it puts, puts things in perspective. So how can citizenship by investment help an investor who is looking for greater physical safety or financial security and mobility rights? So, um, you know, I, I briefly touched on, on those aspects um, in the previous question, but I think more specifically, let's look at a country like Dominica and what it has. So, um, you know, I, I briefly touched on, on those aspects um, in the previous question, but I think more specifically, let's look at a country like Dominica and what it has to offer. In particular, in context of uh, the world we're living in today, you know, a COVID driven um, world where, you know, everyone's been effect, um, affected. But we look at a country like Dominica that has managed to deal with the pandemic so seamlessly. Um, so, the, co the concept of having that, you know, physical safety is is quite clear. You know, Dominica is this beautiful, um, rich, green, healthy spot in the world with, you know, a small um, population and a lot to offer. Um, following on from that, I think the old cliche of, you know, one shouldn't keep all one's eggs in one basket is particularly applicable uh, when it comes to financial security. Importantly, is this aspect of mobility. You know, Nigerians are quite hampered by the access they have uh, with the citizenship they, they hold, if they're a single citizen, a uh, citizenship holder. And this could be extremely frustrating for global business persons and families. And I've seen so many of my clients um, really change their lives being transformed by the fact that they've obtained a citizenship from Dominica where you know the kids might be at school in the UK um, and the you know mother wants to pop over and spend the long weekend with her children um, and the accessibility um, and mobility options of having a dual citizenship and again I can't stress enough um, the benefits of Dominica's citizenship in particular uh, it can be life-changing. So um, I'd like to also know as as of course we've entered 2021, what do you think are the biggest investor priorities when choosing a citizenship by investment program? So I think um, with the advent of 2021, um, priorities have changed. Uh, people are now working remotely. Um, travel is obviously curtailed. So one needs to ask the question, what is an investor needing? What is, um, you know, the real sort of opportunity costs to them by not getting a second citizenship. And um, I certainly think that, you know, painting the picture of being in a safe um, environment with fresh air, um, you know, very uh, warm, welcoming culture, the idea of sitting at your desk um, and looking at the ocean in the Caribbean, knowing that you've got the safety and security for your family and future generations is very attractive. So I think um, from a commercial perspective, we've certainly seen a large rise in citizenship by investment applications, because I think people are trying to access a different way of life. Um, the importance of having a healthy, uh, safe, place to call home 
um, has become the most important aspect to a lot of us. So I think um, that's been important. And then, of course, the process, you know, a lot of our investors are time poor, so they don't have time to spend lengthy residence periods in various countries. Um, and that's quite what's quite attractive about the Citizenship by Investor Program of Dominica. It's a slick, short um, process that can be effectively done within three months. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. That was wonderful. I mean, it was incredible listening to Micah, the Honorable Prime Minister, Roosevelt Spirit talk. It was also great to listen to the Honorable Ambassador Nanthan also talked to us. So um, before, of course, we um, conclude this webinar, um, Micah, would you like to say something? So once again, I'd like to thank uh, the Honorable Prime Minister and the Honorable Ambassador Nanthan for taking time out of their very busy schedules to share with the Guardian and its listeners the benefits um, and the opportunities of a Dominica, Dominica citizenship by investment. And of of course, ease of process. And I think just to close off, you know, the Prime Minister spoke about the value that Dominica gives um, to the world by offering citizenship by investment. And I think it very much aligns with the Article 15 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that provides that everyone has a right to nationality and that no one should be arbitrarily deprived of his nationality uh, nor denied the right to change his nationality. So I think in such a tumultuous time, um, it's wonderful to see such an uh, inspirational uh, country like Dominica to be able to provide such a value to the world. So thank you very much to everyone. Um, and we look forward to speaking with you to offer you more advice and information on this opportunity. Thank you so much, Micah. Thank you very much. So there you have it, listeners. I'm sure you've heard so much. So if you are seeking global mobility for yourself, and your family, if you're looking at greater business opportunities and a beautiful place to live or retire, citizenship of Dominica is surely a fantastic asset to have, considering the fact that it is a reliable and cost-effective program. The Dominica Citizenship by Investment Program is highly recommended to individuals seeking to obtain a second citizenship in a fast and a very secure manner. So thank you so much for being a part of this webinar and honestly, I do hope that you all take advantage of this opportunity. And just in case you have any question at all, you could forward your questions to um, info at csglobalpartners.com or you could also directly, you know, just check out the website uh, of the government, that's um, Dominica um, website, cbiu.gov.dm. And I'm very sure you're going to, you know, um, get all your answers, um, all your questions answered. So thank you one more, once more. Um, have a lovely day.